Really, Amos?
Hello friends. Welcome back to Cosmopolitan Cornbread. Oh goodness. So today is Friday. It's Friday morning and I just got done doing basically all of the chores for the homestead here. Uh, Mr. Smith is currently on his way back from the last business trip. He'll be on for at least a little while. He has been gone uh, week after week, home on the weekend, gone again, home on the weekend, gone somewhere else. But he's finally done with all of the trips and I'm grateful for that. Um, it is a beautiful spring morning here. It's a little overcast, but kind of makes it nice for doing photography and filming because the light's not too bright. No, no harsh shadows, it's naturally filtered light. But it being Friday, I will be spending the majority of the day cleaning my house, preparing dinner for this evening. Um, I'm probably just going to make a soup or something like that because with Mr. Smith traveling, he's had all sorts of flight delays lately. And so I can have something in the slow cooker for him if he's hungry. And on Fridays, I like to do a big batch of something because I don't want to cook on Shabbat. And so I will generally try to make something that is enough for both Friday and Saturday. Um, so yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a soup tonight. <clears throat> I've been doing the keto diet for about a month now. Um, but I'm, I'm ready to kind of go off that a little bit. Not, not go crazy, but... Um, you know, it was, it was kind of a reset for me because my body was just so full of inflammation. It was just, you know, everything hurts sometimes. And I never used to have problems like that until I had Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever back in 2016. And ever since then, I go through periods where I am just in a lot of pain. And by doing at least low carb like paleo or keto um, it really really helps for you know when I have those flare-ups and if it's really bad I'm gonna go straight up carnivore like I did last year um, and it's helped you know like I feel so much better so um, tonight I'm gonna make a soup um, probably Italian vegetable soup or, or maybe some chili Maybe some chili. I haven't made that in a little while. Maybe make a batch of cornbread for Mr. Smith. One of the errands that I'm going to be doing today is running by that quilt shop that I shared with you guys a while back or, or I talked about. Uh, it's located in Greenwood, Arkansas. And um, a, a couple of months ago, back in January, I think it was, I had dropped off a quilt top for Mr. Smith and this was a quilt, the top part, you know, the pretty pieces that are all sewn together, the front of the quilt, uh, that his mom had made and I found it when we were cleaning out her house after she had passed away. And I took it to that quilt shop and they completely finished it for me. They put in the batting, they put up the fabric on the back of it, they ran it through the machine that does that pretty design and, and connects all of the layers. And then because it was a surprise for Mr. Smith and I didn't want him seeing me sewing it. I had them go ahead and do the binding, which is the finishing edge that goes all the way around it. And I had them put just an ivory fabric on the back of it. And then the binding, they found a fabric that almost perfectly matched one of the fabrics that was already in the quilt that my mother-in-law had made. And um, I had some people ask me um, if I could show them a better look at the quilt. And so I'll put in a little clip right here where I just kind of spread it out on my bed so that you could uh, get a better look at the design. And you can see the binding that they put on and a little bit of that pattern that they sewed into it with that great big long arm machine. Well, they did such a great job of it. Um, I went ahead and I dropped off another quilt top. Um, I shared that I inherited some quilt tops from my grandmother. Uh, my aunt and uncle gave them to me, surprised me with them when they brought me my grandmother's organ uh, when they were moving to Florida. And I've just hung on to these quilt tops. Now, my grandmother did not make them. Her grand aunt actually made them. So she got them from her, and now I got them from my grandmother. 
and uh, there was like three or four of them. And I went ahead and I dropped off the first one fairly recently, but because it's not a super busy time of year and because I didn't need them to do the binding part of it for me, it's already done. And so they called me yesterday, told me I could pick it up. And so I'm going to be doing that today. And so I'll show you that quilt in the next video, uh, my Monday video. But speaking of quilts, I've also found a couple great quilts, old quilts, at some antique stores lately. Now, one of them I showed you guys, uh, that one's actually on my bed right now, and I don't remember the name of the pattern that it is, but it's just, it's so simple, and I love the colors, and it's a well-loved quilt, so it's super soft. But just a couple weeks ago, I found another one, and this one is a small checkerboard type of design. I think it's called Nine Patch, but I'm not positive. Um, I don't know. I don't know quilt designs. The only quilt design I know what it's called is the, is it the wedding ring one and the, um, oh, the crazy quilt. I know that one because that's one of them. That's the one that I dropped off at the quilt shop. Um, oh, and log cabin. I know what that one looks like, <laughs> but other than that, I mean, I'm not a quilter, so um, I, I really don't know um, the names of all these designs or anything. But this other quilt that I just got recently, you know, I brought it home. I got it for a great price, just like the other one that I found at the antique store, and brought it home, washed it. Now, it does have a couple of spots where there's some little, like, little uh, worn out areas, but overall, the entire quilt, for the most part, is in great shape. And, you know, I could just take some scrap fabric and sew some little patches on there to cover up those spots. I, I think it'll just kind of go right with the quilt. And just like the other one, it was well-loved. It is super soft. And, you know, there's just something about a well-loved quilt. It's, it's just like wrapping yourself in a hug. And I... I greatly appreciate all of the skill and time that goes into making these things. Um, not only quilts, but also afghans, crocheted things or knitted things. You know, I do some crocheting, and so I understand the amount of time and effort and skill that goes into making these beautiful pieces. And I have a couple little uh, throw afghans, I guess you would call them. Uh, crocheted blankets that I have in my living room laying over my little chairs that I have in there. Uh, when we moved here we got rid of our sofa because our living room, well our sofa that we had was wore out. It needed to go. And we were going to replace it with a new one when we moved here but our living room's kind of small. You know our cabin's not big. And so instead of a sofa, I actually found two chairs at an antique store. And they were a matching set, but one of them was an armchair and one of them was actually a rocking chair. And the cushions had been recently redone, so new cushions, new upholstery and all that. But in keeping with my love of quilts and, and things like that, I thought, wouldn't it be a great idea to find some quilt tops in an antique store and make cushion covers out of them. And so you may remember, if you've been around that long, last year, right after we moved here, I went to an antique store and I found some quilt tops that were really cute. And I'm, I've still been hanging on to them because that was the plan, is to cover these cushions with quilts. Um, you know, just quilt designs. Um, and I just, I've still got them. I still plan on doing that. I just have not had time. <laughs> I just haven't had time. And when I have had the time, I didn't think of it. Um, but one of the things I also mentioned was potentially tea dyeing those quilt tops to give them more of an antique look. But a couple of people suggested that rather than tea dyeing them uh, to get just some writ dye and use, do it that way because the tannins in the tea can cause the fibers in the, in the cloth to break down faster and wear out quicker. And so that is what I did. Well. I ordered the dye, I have the dye. I just bought like a champagne color cause that's kind of close to uh, that antique look that I would am going for. And um, so when I 
get around to sewing the cushion covers, um, that's what I'll be doing. I'll dye it first and then I'll go ahead and um, cut them and sew them into cushion, uh, cushion covers. And you know, making covers for the cushion is always beneficial because not only can you change the look of the cushions, but you can wash them when they need it. And so with that, I'm just gonna say, hmm, thank you for spending some time with me here today. I hope you have a very blessed weekend and uh, Lord willing, I will talk to y'all next time.